Thank you, Prof Chan. Um, just now, I think Kok Yang mentioned something about it's good to know what you don't know. Um, so, as a technologist, I actually thought technology can solve everything. Um, but I, after several years at ASTAR, I realized that it's not everything, uh, especially in terms of uh, smart nation and using data uh, for smart nation and uh, so over lunch, uh, I think there was a chance uh, occasion with Prof Chan and then I mentioned that actually um, um, in order to realize data economy for smart city, uh, um, there's a need to look at some of the governance issues, um, also cultural and social issues. So that's how we got into this uh, project together. I think it's very important too because uh, it also reflects um, the, the so-called ideal of uh, SUTD. I should also mention that I'm also a professor at large for SUTD on loan at ASTA. Uh, SUTD, why I was attracted to go to SUTD because technology and design. Uh, so in this case, to, to, to realize data economy for smart nation, uh, there's also technology is just a part of it, but there's also design. Not design of the physical environment, but design of good policies, de design of good framework, design of the industry and the ecosystems to realize um, data economy. So um, then, then what, what do I really mean by data economy? Why is it, is it economy? So um, and we already know data has been used for businesses like Google and all this, but I think today with the smart nation, which is generating a lot of the, uh, data, uh, smart nation uh, data is a really big part of data, there's a chance to create a new economy based on data. So then it's timely for us to think about this question. So, um, so today I don't have answers for you because uh, we just started the project. So I will just show you what data can do, what I think uh, data economy will look like. In fact, the question we want to ask is what data economy will look like about 15, 25 years from now, when it's a little bit different when, when we become, well, some of us, uh, become the, the aged um, population. It's quite different from the aged now. It's a new aged population. And the people who are going to be working in the society are those who have grown up with the smartphones. Um, you know, if you give, um, uh, let's say, a book to these people that have never seen it, they probably do swiping instead of turning. So, so you must imagine in that era, maybe uh, you know, privacy and all these other issues may be a little bit different. So just um, um, keep that in the back of your mind. But um, before that, I want to go back to history and show you the earliest data scientist, the oldest data scientist. Uh, uh, you know, it's a fic fictional character, Sherlock Holmes, uh, and, um, and, you know, he lamented about um, not having enough data. So we fast forward uh, uh, 130 years uh, now uh, with technology, um, we have lots of data. Um, in fact, um, some might say we are facing this kind of issues. Uh, but as a technologist, I say, don't worry, don't panic, uh, we can solve it for you. Don't worry about the largeness of the data and all this, we'll, we'll help sort it out. This one is not a key concern. Um, in fact, uh, we should be able to use data to build a better, a smarter and also greener city. I think that's what uh, we aspire to be. So I'll show you some examples uh, that, that I'm working on now to give you a sense of the different kind of data, just initial examples. Uh, next, uh, with the real data. So just now you talked about real-time data. Is there a need for real-time data? There's a need for dynamic data, but I think there's a need for real data to tell you exactly what's happening on the ground. Um, so let me show you um, something that uh, data can, can really uh, help you listen to the heartbeat, or there was talk about uh, listening to the pulse of the city. Uh, in fact, listening to the pulse of the city, listening even listening to the pulse of the building a township and, and everything. So in this scenario, never before happened before, and for city planners, for businesses, or even for the citizen living in the city, how should you react to this? And how, what kind of benefit can you bring towards you? I think it's, it's quite boundless. So here I show you the oldest kind of techno uh, data sensor in the city, which is the video camera. Uh, it, unfortunately, it's uh, everywhere. So uh, I mean, but they, we can do analytics here, uh, shown here. Uh, uh, some analytics on um, people movement, uh, about how they use the facilities. The, the pink colors are, uh, are those coming towards you and the blue are going away to, to, to measure bi-direction and the, the white colors are 
moving uh, away. So, I mean, by understanding, you know, the, in, in the fine detail, it's also about granular, in the fine detail, how many people use at which time of the day and which year, you, you can see behind there are multiple escalators, so you can position the escalator, you know, the direction of the escalator based on the need of time of the day. Um, I also want to point out that uh, the, in, in this, in this uh, video, um, the, the privacy, we try to create technology to protect the privacy of the people who see the face are masked. So sometimes there's a need for you to mask the, 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 the identity uh, you know, at the camera side rather than uh, to protect the privacy. So we need to be uh, mindful of that. And actually, if I tell you uh, what analytics else analytics can do, you can even analyze uh, uh, um, you know, the kind of clothing people are wearing. I mean, do they wear watches? I mean, all the way to detail. And this can provide a lot of uh, business insight and, and for you to, to anticipate uh, what is uh, what are the people's uh, uh, needs. Okay, so that's one, this is the oldest, uh, it's, a, it's a very rich data set. Um, um, increasingly, we can also instrument the city, so there are more uh, putting sensors into the city. So here we show you uh, some noise sensor, these are just microphones to, to measure noise pollution in the cities. Uh, the, the objective was to measure how the, 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 the routes, traffic are, are causing noise, noise pollution here. Um, so you can see uh, at different times of the day and, and so on, there are, there are different kind of noise pollution. But I, what I want to show you later, I think if you can see if it moves faster, uh, um, then um, you will see that there are some surprising uh, uh, insights that you'll see the, the, the noisiest part are there. Light, lighter are those that actually at different certain times of the day, that was the noisiest spot and it's away from the roadside. So, so the original hypothesis was the road traffic was the major uh, source of the, the, the noise, but actually sometimes uh, it's not. In this case, actually it was a, a primary school. Uh, the kids are making lots of noise at different time of the day. So this will give you, um, uh, you know, the urban planners deeper insight into it. And I also want to bring out the time element here. The noise, the noisiness part, uh, maybe Saturday mornings and all this, not all the time, that's why you never notice it, but it may be quite an issue. And then the question is how do you design? Uh, the city, how do you place all these uh, facilities in a way that's also time and context sensitive and make it a nice environment for the city, um, citizens. So, um, but we also, these are sensors and, and, and that we deploy, but increasingly the way we move about, uh, we are also creating a lot of digital trails. So here is the smart card that we use. We mentioned, there was mention about EasyLink data uh, that you, there's a smart card for us to do transportation. You tap in and tap out for MRT. Now, these are good data set for, for us to understand where people live and where people work. So I want to show you here, north, south, east, west of Singapore. North, I think urban planning, there was not um, try, effort, a lot of effort to move the working, the jobs and the people who live together. Whereas east, there is a there's business park that's kind of new. And the west, there's also the manufacturing park. So you can see, the people behavior actually do change. You see, people on the west they do live quite close to the to, to where the jobs are. So, so here's an example that by looking at the data, you can see that whether the planning that you do are uh, actually uh, effective or not. Uh, in fact, we can even look at further at how students are, are traveling. You can see people will go to uh, good schools. Uh, you know. You know, even they have crossed some kind of a very long, long distance to go to the good school. So for, for going to school is different. And then I think this one is a social in indication. I mean, it's a surprising thing to me. Why do seniors uh, on, on weekdays on 7 a.m., they do travel a lot with the public transportation. So this is something that's interesting. Maybe they are taking uh, jobs at these uh, uh, factories and all that. So need further uh, uh, study into this. So I want to show you one last data set. This is the taxi that was mentioning about tapping into tech talents of the taxi. So taxis are also <coughs> tracked uh, with the Joe spatial location services. So with this data, we can compute the, the demand of the taxi that is shown here as a red curve. And the green is the actual live data, real-time data of the taxis. So in the ideal situation, the green curve should match the red curve, but it's not. So, so, you at, so here at the taxi, Changi Airport, you'll see that the, red, uh, the demand, uh, uh, the, 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 red, the red curve is a, uh, uh, it's very low, whereas the green, green curve is very high. So the supply, a lot of taxis are going there. So in this case, actually, there's incentive. So this is policy issue. Uh, previously, there was a study about people who tip uh, very well from the airport. In this case, actually, in Singapore, the taxi go to the airport, there's a surcharge. So that's behavioral. The taxi driver go there and, 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 then, and, then, and then 
and then instead of going to the town to serve where the, all the demands are. So, so I think all these data are, are very useful for you to, 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 to understand the city and also to exploit and create more efficient system. So uh, Minister before said something about data being the new currency for smart city, I tend to think of data as the new electricity for smart cities. Um, when electricity was invented, it, it, caused, it created an industrial revolution, it created new economies. I think data is the equivalent of electricity. Um, um, in where electricity make the city bright, um, uh, data will make the city smart. So, so in this situation, then we want to think how, how can we do, um, you know, make use of the data to create, to create a new economy, like what electricity has, has brought about in, 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 the, in, the, in the previous years. So, so realizing economy, so I, I said I have, don't have uh, answers, but I have some issues to point out. In order to realize data economy, in, in my point of view, um, one, I think that was mentioned before, uh, data accessibility, we, there was mentioned about uh, data being open. I tend to think of data being liquid. Uh, in fact, I always say uh, if you want to create a, a data economy and I envision in 25 years from now, you can open a data pad and the data will flow up and then you can use the data as and when you need as a resource. So to do that, you need to have uh, open standards, you need to have um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, a, a good framework for that. Yeah? So, so here, uh, here, I want to share with you an example project that Singapore is doing. So we have this uh, Jurong Lake District, JLD stands for Jurong Lake District, and, and run by IDA. Then the idea is that in a smart city, if data is going to be the new electricity for the smart city, then the infrastructure to provide this electricity should be by the city. So in this case, uh, we develop a technology for sensing. Sense and sensibility is a program by ASTAR. Um, about how do you instrument the city in a, in a cost-effective way and robust way. So that's very easy for you to plug and play a new sensor as well as needed. But we also connect the, the, the sensor data and other data onto this uh, data uh, analytics platform called ASTAR. That is ex exchange because data needs to be exchanged and integrated to create new value. So here uh, we are deploying at the Jurong Lake District as a test bed. Uh, it will go live, I think, later this year. So the other things about is uh, data being siloed. Uh, here I'll show you one example of, uh, uh, I always say we don't want the, the, the smart city to be a city of uh, Christmas trees of cameras. Um, so technology can, may be able to help actually. It may, actually there's no need to have so many cameras. We, you, actually there are technologies to have one big camera, 360 degrees and so on and so forth to do that. So it's about cultural issues here. So, so data is, tend to be siloed and it's also because um, you know, government, how, how agencies are being structured. Uh, they, each of, uh, there was a, a saying that, that um, um, the various functions of the cities are vertical, but we live horizontally because we as a citizens, we, we need transportation, we need energy and all this, but the way is, uh, the organization structure is structured in the government is they are all vertical, electricity and transport, all, all this. So but if data is being siloed, then, you know, then there's a, the problem of not, not being seeing the whole picture. Yeah? So that needs to be solved. And of course, data privacy, we talked a lot about that. It can be a, a great uh, showstopper. Uh, here, I want to say as a technologist, I think, again, uh, technology, there are technology to, to help solve, address some of these needs. For example, I show you just now the face, the dynamic real-time face masking of the video data. Uh, there are other technology. But in this case, we need a conversation with the people to see what is comfortable, what is not comfortable, what are the needs. And, and all that, and then we develop technological solution for that. Yeah. And then finally, we talk about capability. Uh, in the end, uh, uh, we need human being to, 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 to turn the data into insight. So there was a question about um, the, the, the real-time uh, data uh, causing collapse of the financial systems. Uh, that's when you, you pass the control totally to the computer. So there was um, uh, the, about automation and control. So I believe um, data should not replace human. Yeah? Data should be uh, enhancing the human. In the end, you need uh, data scientists. In fact, uh, I think this is how our bureaucrats should look like. Uh, they should be as sexy as this, but anyway, uh, maybe too much to ask for. Um, okay, but finally, uh, what is the, the key issue that I think a lot of uh, questions we should ask about managing the, the data economy that technology can also, but we should start thinking about about data ownership, really, who owns the data? Huh? So, so when we go to see the doctor, do we own the 
uh, the data, our medical data, or does the doctor own it or the hospital own it? When we do a Google search, uh, the search data, do we own the search data or Google owns it? Uh, transparency, <coughs> that was mentioned about that before, especially transparency of use. Uh, when you use my data, uh, uh, what, what do we use it for? And then it should be, you know, you, people can, can audit the systems. And also valuation, what values of data? I mean, a data by itself is, is raw material, probably uh, useless to, to me, but when combined together, it's actually very useful. But how do you monetize and value, uh, create a value for this data? And, and then, what are the business models uh, for, for, for powering such uh, data economies? Because of the nature of the data, you need data, uh, public, private, and people sectors to come together. For example, if you want to understand uh, urban mobility, you have data that is owned by the uh, public agencies, like the road networks, uh, maybe uh, the, the train arrival and all these, uh, and also requirements. You have data by the, the private agents, uh, private companies like the taxis and all that. And then also people like me, because for last month when I'm walking and all these things, these are data that I, I create. So all these data need to come together. And, and, and actually, uh, the question is, um, a lot of time we, we think about smart city as a sponsored uh, a project for the, the government to make the city smart, but I think to make it uh, sustainable, there should be uh, business models for that in order to finance all this uh, uh, work that, that makes a smart city. And then one more, uh, two more questions that I think uh, we should ask about is should the data economy be re regulated or governed? So data, as we know, is very sensitive. Uh, but there are examples before, like the, the medical uh, 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 industry or even finance industry. Uh, we give our very private information to the banks. We give our very treasured wealth to the bank. We trust them. There's certain uh, uh, code of conduct uh, and, 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 and model. So we have to think what, what kind of model works for, for, for this if we really want to uh, uh, enable data economy. And finally, this is my personal wish, uh, how do we promote equitable re redistribution of gains for the data economy? Because I think data is very valuable. Um, currently, when we uh, exchange our data for a service like Google and other things, we exchange it for free. And I think it would be interesting to do a study about what is that search information I give to, what is the dollar value of that? I think it's, it's more than free. So, so the question is how, how do you promote equitable redistribution of the gains, then this will also uh, 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 incentivize people to contribute data to you. So, so all these are very complicated questions, uh, uh, and I think Prop Chance Group will help us answer that. I'm, I'm just a technologist to provide a question. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a, it's a multiple-year project, and, but I think it's time for us to start thinking of that now. So I'll end with this. I think our, our vision in the end is really um, um, public agency, business, and people are able to make informed decisions. So we're not replacing people. We, we need to provide people the, the right data at the right time so that they can make informed decisions, good decisions, and then to generate economic values and also positive societal impact. That's why uh, in this session we talk about data society. That's about using data to create positive societal impact and then data economy, using data to create wealth for the city, for the people, and also for all. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.